All right. Uh, wheel bearings are out, are going out in the front of the Big Bear after just one season of riding. Um, I knew this upper ball joint was about to uh, uh, go out um, before Labor Day weekend, so I swapped that one. The other one is bad too on the other side. But how you check is tire shouldn't do that. And if you can see, I don't know if I can get the GoPro to focus or not, but you can just tell it's the wheel bearings just wobbling in there. Um, which happens when you put 30 inch tires and, and uh, bracket lift. Just puts extra stress and everything. Um, so I just figured I'd do a quick vid. Show you that they're out on this side too. Oh, yeah, I forgot I zipped the lug nuts out of that one already. But uh, the Grizz is good to go. Every, all the maintenance done on that bad boy. But stay tuned. All right, and your wheel bearings uh, are obviously in here. Um, there's a seal, bearing, uh, median is what I call it. Uh, there's a little cast lip and a wheel bearing and then a median, or uh, not median, a seal. And you gotta pound one bearing out that way, you gotta pound one bearing out this way. But you gotta get this whole hub off um, and get her out uh, on the workbench. And I don't have a press, but I do use a vise and it's worked for every set of wheel bearings so far. Um, stay tuned. All right, get the hub off, like so. So you can see it better from this side, what I'm about to show you guys. Um, you can see three, you can see a bearing, a spacer, and a bearing down further. So this bearing right here gets pounded out that way. This bearing gets pounded out that way. So, obviously you gotta pull the seals out, which, you know, everybody knows what a seal puller is. Just boom, boom, yank, you know, stick it in a vise, comes out. Um, and the two bearings, you know, one's gotta go that way. I just really just kinda keep it sitting just like this and take a either chisel or a punch, kinda catch the edge of it and hit one down that way. Then the center uh, spacer will just kinda fall out. And it's a lot easier to always hit the second one out. Um, and I always, I got a ball joint press kit, the master one for the snap-on, so. That works good for setting that on just like that so you can hit the bearing out through there and then it just lands in that cup and blah 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 the bearings i took out of the other side full of dirt that's what happens after just just a year of riding um stay tuned so you can see that what i call a median right in the middle right in the middle of this bad boy so that's why one bearing has got to be pounded out that way, the other bearing has got to be pounded out that way. So you can obviously see that they still had grease in them, but they were getting wobbly a little bit. And here's the middle spacer. So what it was is one bearing got pounded in right here. The other one got pounded in right here. And then there was a median in between them like that, which kind of sits, basically sits right in the center there, that's what it does. So, the new ones are bi-directional, they don't even matter. Stick them in there, then you use the vise to kind of squeeze them back together. So. Then before I press any bearings in, I actually do use a Dremel. I love this thing. If anyone doesn't have a cordless Dremel, I would highly recommend getting one because they're just flipping awesome. What I do is I'll sit here and I'll, I'll clean, clean that out, clean all the surface all the way around. I'll just shine everything up and get all that dirt and grime out of there best you can with some brake cleaner. And Spray it out.
get it all nice and clean for some nice fresh grease. All right, so to press the wheel bearing in from the back, it's not all the way pressed in yet, so don't be fooled, but to get it started, I just put the vise right in the center and then squeeze it. Turn the handle and it goes in. Be careful though, sometimes it goes in uneven where you gotta let it up and then push, put a little pressure on the bottom or a little pressure on top to level it back out and it'll just pop in. And then when it's uh, flush with the casting, you have to, uh, I got, this is a piece that I got out of my ball joint press because these are flipping awesome. Um, something to kind of go over the um, rest of the bearing and then you can use the vise to press it in the rest of the way with this. You know, and just pinch it between the jaws like you're, like you're supposed to. Um, pretty simple. Oh, and one more thing I want to add, see how nice and clean and shiny it is in there. Gotta do it. Get all that grime out of there. Wheel bearings will last longer. This one's going in good. You just turn it. Simple as that. And then you grab this piece, throw that in there, press it and rest it away. All right, my dumbass forgot to put the spacer in the middle of them two bearings. See there's a gap in there? The spacer's supposed to be in there. Don't do that. If uh, that does happen to you and you gotta pound that bearing back out with a, with a chisel, don't use a chisel or punch. Brass, softer metal, won't damage your bearing. I end up getting it out. It spins just fine yet. Awesome, no dents, no dings. You put this back in the drawer and hope you don't have to use it again. And got a seal. Find a socket or once again, took in a piece out of my ball joint press. Stick that on there. Just make it a good video of it. These are usually pretty simple. They just kind of press in there. Sure it's flush. <laughs> Good enough. Then you take this and you stick it on your axle and you put it back on your ATV. And that's how I change wheel bearings, folks. Thanks for watching.